What's up guys? Justin here from Poorly Reviewed Beer. Happy December and welcome to part two of my Christmas beer roundup. Let's get right to it. From Avery Brewing Company in Boulder, Colorado, this is Old Jubilation Ale. Our notes from the brewer. Our winter strong ale has a gorgeous mahogany hue, a hint of hazelnuts, and a finish reminiscent of mocha and toffee. No spices, just a perfect blend of five specialty malts. Special Roast, Victory, Black, Chocolate, and Two-Row Malts, along with London Ale Yeast and Bullion Hops. 8.3% ABV. All right. Uh... Brown color, kind of a, it's a little hazy, but kind of a, uh, like a watered down cola. As I hold it up to a light, more, uh, more copperish highlights or bronze. And again, I, I'm, uh, it's not just the, uh, the darkness of the beer. I'm having trouble, even in the light, uh, seeing through the other side. So this is pretty hazy all the way through. And the bottom of the glass, I can see actually a good amount of particulate matter through the, the later highlights. Uh, about a finger's worth of head you can see. And it's it's kind of pretty well stayed there since I poured it a moment ago. Alright, let's try it out. <laughs> First thing that hits me is the booze uh, a little bit. It is, as, as I said, 8.3% ABV. That booze wasn't kind of in the back, though. Yeah, a little bit of a dark fruity sweetness. And um, I think some of the, the, the sugary or dark sugary uh, notes that they mentioned, like toffee, um, caramel, those kinds of things. Maybe just a little bit of something uh, pastry or bready. Almost kind of like some kind of a, like a flavored, uh, a flavored scone or a flavored croissant, something like that. Yeah, there's a, a, maybe just a bit of a chocolate note too, so maybe kind of like a, a chocolate covered croissant. A dark berry scone. Um, malty. And a really pretty creamy mouthfeel. Not a lot of a... Uh, not a lot of head left. But it feels pretty creamy in the mouth. At least to me anyway. Creamy, pretty smooth. Really tasty. Not overly sweet. Uh, despite the... Um, the flavor notes would kind of maybe think it would go that way, but not really all that sweet. Plenty tasty. There is a, a a noticeable boozy note in the back half of the drinking experience. And it does hold on a little bit um, after drinking. Getting a little bit of it in the aroma as well. Uh, so just a, a hint of that alcohol burn. But um, otherwise, a really tasty beer, pretty much uh, in terms of kind of the winter warmer style, knocked it out of the park. I think it's officially listed as an old ale, or at least that's, uh, that's what they say on Beer Advocate. Um, and then again, they just absolutely knocked it out of the park for the style. So that is the, uh, the Avery Old Jubilation Ale. And now we'll check out the next beer. All right, I have the next beer, and I have uh, plenty of notes about it, as it is uh, an import, so I'll get to all about this brewery in just a moment. But this is Corson Donk Christmas Ale. Uh, the Corson Donk website, sadly, did not, did not work for me, but I was able to get plenty of information from uh, their importer, in Massachusetts, uh, St. Killian's, St. Killian Imports. 
Uh, founded in 1938, the Priory of Corsendonk, and actually before I uh, start all this, um, plenty of Belgian names in this uh, in this description. Uh, I did a little bit of uh, pronunciation re research beforehand, but please uh, forgive any mispronunciations I have. I am doing my best. Uh, founded in 1938, the Priory of Corsendonk in present-day Alternaut comprised a rather important brewery and malt house. The Korsendonk monks famous, famously brewed the beer as a contemplative practice. After the Austrian Emperor Joseph II shut down the Priory of Korsendonk in 1784, the brewing of Korsendonk beer changed hands throughout the course of a century. From 1982 onwards, the Korsendonk beer regained its fame and the simplicity of the packaging acts as an emblem of the Middle Ages and Korsendonk's rich past. Since its regain of fame, Korsendonk beer has been traditionally brewed in the craft breweries of Dubac and Pernod in the Belgian Ardennes. Korsendonk can boast the label brewed and bottled in Belgium and is brewed exclusively with all natural ingredients, which include pure water, malt, hops, yeast, and herbs, including coriander, dried orange rind, and cinnamon. Bottled Korsendonk is fermented twice. The first fermentation takes place in the brewery's fermentation tubs, and the second fermentation is in the bottle itself. Now about this Christmas ale, Brewed with pale Munich and Cara Munich malts, Kent Golding hops. This is a rich, dark, joyous brew with which to celebrate the holiday season. Its aroma of chocolate malt and spiciness is reminiscent of the wonderful smells of holiday baking in Mom's kitchen. Silky smooth on the palate, it's predominantly malty with smoky, spicy, and citrusy notes and a long lingering finish that, that is lightly tart and malty. Bottle conditioned for a fresh, lively taste. Round and well-balanced, it's a welcome addition for holiday tables and beyond. 8.1% ABV. Enough talk. Let's check it out. So a big old chunk of sediment that was in the bottom of the bottle slipped out at the very end. I will tell you that much. Uh, this is an 11.2 ounce bottle, 330 milliliters, so a little bit smaller than your uh, standard American bottles, but 330 milliliters is a pretty uh, pretty standard size in Europe. Uh, about two fingers worth of head you can see, a uh, similar color to the uh, to the Avery, and I can see all the stuff settled to the bottom now. Hmm. I don't know if this is gonna pick up at all. I highly doubt it. Yeah, that's not gonna not gonna pick up. But there are several solid pieces at the bottom of this uh, the bottom of this beer. I probably should not have ended up in the glass, frankly. All right, so I'm gonna give that a moment to settle down, and then we will get to tasting. All right, so it looks like everything's pretty well settled. Still a little bit suspended in there, but it's all towards the bottom of the uh, glass, and I doubt for this tasting we'll get much past the midway point. Um, plenty of that particulate matter in the in the head, um, as the head's kind of dissipated on the lacing on the sides of the glass. So, um, doing a little bit of research while I was waiting, just didn't really see anything about any kind of particulate matter, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how this turns out. Ooh. Really neat smell. Mm. A really well focused sweetness is kind of the first thing I get. A lot of the, I think a lot of similar notes from um, the old Jubilation, frankly. Uh, hmm. Definitely some uh, some dark fruit notes. Uh, it's just, again, a somewhat sweeter. It's, it's not overpoweringly sweet, but it is a, the word that's coming to me is very focused, a focused sweetness. And that sweetness does uh, does linger 
um, after the drinking experience. Um, if I didn't get to it, uh, just real quick, it's kind of a similar color to the Avery. Uh, I can still see a whole lot of uh, material just kind of shooting up and down the glass. I think from the carbonation bubbles inside, it'll catch a piece and send it up a ways and then it'll come tumbling back down. And I'm sure my drinking it, agitating the glass is uh, causing that a little bit. Just kind of a, a just kind of a general a general candy note and the dark fruits. Plenty of malt and malt sweetness. Kind of a, a brown sugar type of a note as well. In terms of the mouthfeel, similar to the Avery. Maybe just a, a little, a hair more, a hair more prickly, uh, but still relatively smooth and creamy. And uh, the booze note is generally fairly muted during the drinking experience. It kind of pushes back in the uh, in the aftertaste, though. Uh, inc just incredibly complex beer. It's. <laughs> Maybe, dare I say, almost beyond my comprehension. Uh, I can't say this beer is extremely well regarded by the community. Um, I can see why. It's incredibly tasty. Uh, there's uh, quite a bit of depth in that taste. Again, the sweetness, but not overly sweet. Uh, nice maltiness, um, some fruity notes, as well as just some other things. Um, so it's just really a, a really neat beer. Um, again, so again, that's the uh, Course and Donk Christmas Ale. And that does it for this edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer. You can find all of our, all my reviews, video and written, along with news, commentary, and more at PoorlyReviewedBeer.com. Also check out PRB on Twitter and Facebook. Those links will be in the description below. You can also find me on the web apps Untapped and Instagram. Both of those usernames are Poorly Reviewed Beer. And if you are so inclined, please uh, like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around at Poorly Reviewed Beer.